I'm Chris Rollison, founder of CSRA. We're going on our 11th year in business, and so I'm celebrating by sharing some of my most memorable moments of the past 10 years. In this video, I'll share some of my notable client work and what I learned in working with each client. First, in 2007, I'm eternally grateful to Steve and Sue Haas for, for the work that we did at a global investment bank. They were part of an internal strategy group and they wanted to learn what social networks, what kind of risks and disruptions and opportunities social networks posed to their various businesses. This work really reminded me of my work at PricewaterhouseCoopers Consulting because I was advising a global business on disruptive change across many parts of its business. Later in 2007, you may remember that there was a global financial meltdown. And of course, no one was interested in any kind of strategy in those days. However, I'd been networking as usual, and I was trying to explain the value of LinkedIn to executives in my network. And, and I'd have coffee and explain the value of LinkedIn for their careers and their, their roles as leaders. And after I'd done this a few times, I realized, gee, there's got to be an executive's guide out there that does this for them. And I looked high and low, but I couldn't find one. So, of course, being a writer at heart, I wrote a very, very long blog post. And uh, the word got out. It was used by people all over the world. And since uh, big consulting projects were not uh, very popular in those days, I thought, well, gee, but people seem to be very interested in LinkedIn, so I created some consulting offerings around it. And uh, hundreds of people attended my public LinkedIn seminars, and I did um, seminars um, at conferences around the country and out of the country as well. And uh, of course, being a good management consultant and having created frameworks and stuff in the past, I thought, well, if the people are interested in LinkedIn like this, they're going to be interested in other platforms. So I created all the offer, all the services and the approaches and the learning materials for Facebook and Twitter and blogs as well. And so I was holding these seminars and doing some consulting work through about uh, 2009. And this is special to me because I got to work with small business owners, startups, professional services firms, as well as individuals who wanted to understand how to use social networks for their careers. And uh, this is a special time for me, and the Executive's Guides are still up online at um, executivesguide-socialnetworks.com. At the beginning of 2010, though, things came roaring back, and I signed a Fortune 50 retailer and a global electronics brand for social business strategy in uh, the beginning of the year. And uh, this work is very special. I thank Jennifer and uh, Roddy and Sam for the opportunity to work with them to do ethnographic research. I didn't think of it in those days. I didn't call it that. But it was really in doing intense study of various kinds of users or customers, uh, different types of people that were very important to their brands. And I developed the, uh, the techniques for doing ethnographic research. I developed my own tools and processes. Um, a year before, like in 2008, I released my formal methodology. It's called the Social Network Roadmap. You can find it at socialnetworkroadmap.com. But it was a big, full life cycle framework and methodology. And... Um, with uh, these clients, I got to use it um, for a full life cycle social business strategy. So I did ethnographic on various um, stakeholders like gamers, engineers, moms, fitness geeks, middle-aged men trying to get back into shape, teenage punks living in their uh, parents' basements, uh, gamers, board game enthusiasts, um, slot car racers, model railroaders, you get the idea. And, and it showed that the tools and processes 
worked across any, any type of person or behavior and produced fantastic results, quantitative and qualitative. Later in 2010, I signed a, a local government on the East Coast, and uh, Steve and Shalia had seen one of my videos online on uh, the social network roadmap methodology, and they said, we want this. And it was a local government on the East Coast um, who was having issues with some of its constituencies in its community. So they wanted to use social networks to build new relationships and their reputation within their community. And we had a fantastic full life cycle social business strategy and several pilots together, and they got blockbuster results. And um, this was just fascinating because it showed that the perceived difference between digital networks of people and actual physical networks of people are largely conceptual. People are people and the way they act and what they want holds true across digital and analog. In 2012, I started work with a global nonprofit organization and they asked me to do social business strategy and ethnographic of 10 geographical regions around the world. And so we delved deep into how their value proposition was playing out across markets. And uh, it, was, it was breakthrough for them because they got to understand what they had to tweak about their value proposition in some markets. And of course, they could learn from more mature markets uh, what could translate to other markets and so forth. And this was breakthrough work. We also did several pilots which were focused on developing their internal competency in experiential social media. That was fantastic work. Uh, and I'm eternally grateful to Kenji and uh, Kelly and the team over there. This whole time, I, I was just elated about what I was discovering and clients' results. Uh, when you started approaching people as people, not as demographics, and how they respond when you treat them as people online is just revolutionary. And so I got a, a, a similar feeling to what I'd gotten with the Executive's Guide to LinkedIn because I thought, I've got a secret here. I've got to let this out and, and I, I want to do it. I want to scale it. So I thought, well, I, I just do not want to take time off to write a book and this is going to be a big, long process. Well, I did it. So um, I wrote the social channel, that's the, 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 its first name, and I worked on it pretty much full time for a couple of years from uh, 2013 through 2015. And um, during that time, I thought, wait a minute, this is, gonna, this is very long and people have no time. So I actually, midstream, I transformed it into an app. So the Social Channel app is what it's called now. You can find it at socialchannelapp.com. But it's a, a huge uh, interactive learning guide. And uh, it's got hundreds of internal and external links. And uh, the whole point is to shorten the learning experience. And it's been designed around several click-throughs or learning streams. And of course, um, any author will tell you that a project like this really focuses and deepens uh, my thinking. And, um, and so when I published the app uh, at the end of 2015, uh, it's a new beginning for CSRA. While building the app part-time, I partnered with a digital agency to keep the lights on over here. And um, I did ethnographic small projects for a, a wide range of um, their clients, um, plastic surgery clients, medical, uh, real estate, CPG, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Then in 2010 or 2015, in the summer, we decided to do an ethnographic and experiential case study. And we did this with um, a smoke alarm company. And so this is a deeper project, and the whole point was, gee, well, this experiential stuff sounds great, but how does it really play out in the real world in terms of real-world metrics? 
So we compiled the results of, of the client's uh, social media. I call this traditional brand-focused, content-focused social media. And we got results, and that was kind of like the baseline. And the first stage of experiential, I did ethnographic on the stakeholders of the client. And then the agency's teams used the ethnographic and a relatively normal uh, content-focused approach to social media. And they got um, much better results that way. The second phase of the case study was I led an experiential team and we put content in the background and really focused on interaction. And we just blew the metrics off the map. Uh, it's amazing. I'll include um, some of these links at the end of the video, but um, it's all written down in different formats if you're interested. But um, this is real, it was really revolutionary. And I'm very thankful to Kevin and the team over there for the opportunity to have done that. So this brings us to the present day, and uh, I'm doing work now with a higher education client, and this is fascinating because it's so hands-on with different people and stakeholders. We've uh, been working on the strategy and we're just about to kick off our first pilot. So what is my focus now and going on to the future? I'm going to scale the results that we got from the smoke alarm consumer electronics client across any industry. Because I've learned in the past decade that people are people. Yes, the social context around the industry and the vernacular and things uh, uh, vary a little bit, but underneath what I've learned is that when you show empathy, not by saying you're empathic, but by acting based on your empathy, people just, your relationship transforms with people. And so I've learned this throughout the past 10 years and it really came to the fore with the case study. So now I'm actively looking for partners in any industry who are interested in transforming their relationships with stakeholders that they have. Usually customers or governments have constituents, nonprofits have donors and volunteers, and employees everywhere. And that is drive to trust. So these are the highlights of CSRA and uh, my journey uh, pioneering in experiential social media. And uh, here's to the next 10 years. Thanks and bye for now.